All right, Algebra 2 guys. Hello, hello. This is 5.4, complex numbers. All right, so remember, we're dealing with everything quadratic, which means everything with a square root. So, or everything with that is being squared, so the opposite of squaring is square root. So we need to talk a little bit about square roots and what can and does, in fact, happen when you deal with square roots. So, a couple of rules to know right away, all right, is that if I've got a number under here, I can split it apart into two smaller numbers. Okay, I can split it apart into one of their factors. Uh, a good example of this would be like the square root of 36. I can split that apart into the square root of 9 times 4, and I can split that apart into square root of 9 times square root of 4. All right, that's just one example. I can split that apart any way that I want. The second rule is this. Is if I got the square root of a whole fraction... That is equivalent to square root of the top, square root of the bottom. So if I've got the square root of 25 over 4, well, that's going to be just the square root of 25 over the square root of 4, which is just 5 over 2. All right, so remember, anytime there's a number underneath the square root, you can break it apart by the, prop, by the factors that you would multiply to get it. And if you have a square root of a fraction, you can take square root of a top and square root of a bottom. So simplified square root expressions do not have radicals in the denominator. And any number remaining in, come on, any number remaining under the square root has no perfect square factor other than one. So basically, when we say simplify a square root, all that we mean by that is break it down to where it can't be all that we mean is break it down to where you cannot um, take a square root anymore. Okay, you can't have square roots in the denominator. All right, so I can't have like this. All right, that doesn't work. That's not simplified. And I also can't leave something like this, where I could break this apart into like square root of 4 times square root of 10, which is 2 square root of 10. This is simplified. This is not. So something that's going to be very, 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 very handy for you to know is the perfect squares. They give you up to 16. I think up to 15 is pretty acceptable, but if you can remember 16, that's pretty cool too. So everyone knows 1 through 10. 11 squared is 121, and the way I remember that is that the 2 jumps in between the two 1s. 12 times 12 is 144. 13 and 14 are just kind of switched around a little bit. 15 and 15, 225. 16 is 256. So by simplifying the square roots, I'm going to break this apart into two numbers where one of them is the biggest square root, biggest one of these guys that I can think of, all right, that I can come up with. All right, so 25 and 2, 25 is a perfect square. So simplified, that's just going to be 5 square root of 2. Square root of 45, I want to split this into 9 and 5. 9 is the biggest factor that's also a perfect square. Also, I forgot to include 4. So simplified, that will be 3 square root of 5. So square root of 128, this one's a little tougher. you got to do a little more thinking. So square root of 128. Well, let's see. Hmm. I know 4 goes into it, but I think that's going to be bigger. So maybe one, maybe 16. Maybe, I don't think 25 will do it. I don't, 36 won't do it. 16 will work, but watch this. Square root of 16 is going to be 4. But square root of 8, I can keep simplifying that. So even if you can keep simplifying it, it's fine. You'll still end up with the same answer. It just won't be quite as uh, quite as quick as the other ones. This can split into square root of 4 times square root of 2. So I'll have 4 times the square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 2. So 8 square root of 2 would have been my answer. 
the short way to do it would have been to recognize that square root of 64 times square root of 2 gives me 8 square root of 2. But I showed you that way to show you that even if you're not quite there, if you can keep going, you can still end up at the same place. So square root of x squared, quite simply, just x. That's simplified right now. So how about this one? Haha, <laughs> this could be fun. So split this apart. Split this apart. Square root of 25, square root of x squared, square root of y to the fourth. I do that just because that way I can take it one piece at a time, and I have way, 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 way less chance of screwing up. So square root of 25 is 5, square root of x squared is x. Square root of y to the fourth is basically kind of thinking about back to rules of exponents. It's basically saying this, take 4 divided by 2, because the power of 1 half is the square root. All right, square root of y is the same thing as taking y to the 1 half power. So this is like saying take y to the fourth to the 1 half. So it ends up being y squared. Another way to think about that is that I can split apart y to the fourth into y squared times y squared, which is y times y, which is y squared. So that's going to be my answer. Square root of x squared over square root of x. Okay, this one's going to get just a little bit messy. I'm warning you right now. But first thing I want to do is split that apart. Just the top, just the bottom, see what I'm dealing with. Square root of x squared in the top is just going to be x. Square root of x in the bottom. All right, now, do not leave it like this. This is not simplified. That's not simplified. How do I know? I've got a square root in the bottom. I cannot do that. No square root in the bottom. So I have to get rid of the square root in the bottom. But how do I get rid of the square root in the bottom? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to multiply both the top and bottom by the square root. Technically, this is 1. Same thing on top, same thing on bottom. That's going to be 1. But what ends up happening is this. Square root of x times square root of x basically is just x. This becomes x over square root of x when I multiply it together. So if I multiply this, this ends up being... Um, square root of x squared, which gives me just x. And then that cancels out, and I'm left with just square root of x. Now, if you were clever, you could have recognized back in here that x squared over x can cancel out, and now we've just been left with x squared of, a square root of x. So I wanted to show you mathematically what to do to not, when you have to simplify it. All right, so take a look at this. Square root of 11 over square root of 49. So if 11 over 49 doesn't do anything, so let's just split this apart. So square root of 11, that doesn't help me. Square root of 49 is 7. I can leave with this because that's going to be because that's going to be simplified, technically. There's no square root in the bottom, and square root of 11 is as simple as I can get. Square root of 32 over 81. How does that change if I throw an x in there? Okay, for square root of 32 over square root of 81. First off, split it apart, top and bottom. Square root of 81 should jump out as jump out at you that it, that is 9. Square root of 32. All right, if you're like most kids, you'll see that you can pull 4 out of there. If you're clever, you'll see that it's actually 16 times 2 which means that square root of 16 is 4. There's going to be your simplified answer. All right, so square root the bottom. I can't square root the top. Got to split it apart into something I can take the square root to, square root of, and write what's left. So how about this one? Well, before you even do anything with the square root, if you're terribly clever, you'll recognize that 32 over 8 is 4. So that becomes square root of 4x. Now I can split this apart into square root of 4, square root of x. Square root of 4 is 2, square root of x is, we don't know what that is. So I'm just going to put 2 square root of x. That will be my answer. Now I'm hoping you're starting to see that it's a good idea to start looking to simplify, if you can, 
if you can, um, if you can before you start dealing with the square root. So for any real number, if x squared equals n, then I've technically got two solutions, plus or minus. So let's solve using square roots. So if I add 25 to both sides, I get x squared equals 25. If I take the square root of that, square root of x squared is x. Square root of 25, actually there's two answers here, plus and minus 5. And the reason for that is this. 5 squared gives you 25. However, negative 5 squared also gives you 25. So kind of a cool thing to remember, kind of one thing to remember, whenever you're dealing with functions, whenever you're dealing with things like quadratic or anything crazier or bigger than that, whatever this exponent is, that's how many answers you should have. Okay, let me say that again. Whatever the exponent is that you're solving for is how many solutions there should be. All right, now it could be one solution repeated many times. It could be one solution could show up more than once, but if I've got like x to the fourth plus something plus something minus something equals a number, I'm going to have four solutions to that problem. So here, if I've got 2x squared, I'm going to have two solutions to that problem. All right, so if I take a look at this, add 45 equals 98 divided by 2 is 49. Square root, square root, plus and minus 7 is going to be your answer. So it's just following the rules of algebra. Oh, here we go. Now, take a look. This entire thing is underneath the square root. If I add 12, that's 25. So now square root this. I get x plus 2 equals 5 and x plus 2 equals negative 5. This is rem reminiscent of uh, absolute value a little bit. So either x is going to equal 3 and x is going to equal negative 7. There's my two solutions. So you see how I split that apart. Square root of 25 can be 5 or negative 5, so I've got to set that equal to both of them. All right, so if we take a look. So 3x squared equals negative 48 divide by 3. I get x squared to be negative 16. That's weird. Same idea for this one. We can't do that. But what we can do is say x squared minus 16 is this. All right? What I can do is break this apart. I can say x squared is equal to um, negative 1 times 16. So when I square root that, I can say x is equal to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 16. Now, the square root of 16 is still 4. The square root of negative 1 is what we in math call i. So x is actually going to be equal to plus or minus 4i. That is going to be my solution. All right, for 2x squared plus 0, all right, I'll do that around here quick. So if I subtract 2 over, divide by 2, I get x squared equals negative 1. So that means when I square root, x is going to be equal to plus or minus i. i is a fancy way of saying that it's a square root of negative 1. So i squared is going to be negative 1, just negative 1. So simplify the square roots of, imagine, of negative numbers. So I need to break this apart. So the first thing I'm going to do is this. Go square root of 18 times square root of negative 1. All right, I know that this is just i. This is going to break apart into square root of 9, square root of 2. Square root of 9 is 3. So my answer is going to be 3i square root of 2. And that's where I write it. I write i after the number, before the square root. Okay, after the number, before the square root, right outside the square root is where I put that. So here, first thing I want to do, square root of negative 1, 
square root of 125 x to the fifth. Do that first. Just write that step. It makes your life so much easier. So now split this guy apart. So I'm going to do square root of 125, square root of x to the fifth. Square root of 125, 125 is 25 times 5. So a square root there, square root there. So that will be 5 square root of 5. X to the fifth is like x squared, x squared, and x. So it's like x times x times square root of x. So x times x is x squared. 5 is still over here. So 5x squared is going to be on the outside. I need to bring i outside. Then underneath, I'm going to have 5x. All right, that's a that's a, not an easy problem. There's a lot of pieces to that. That one's easy to screw up. So be careful with ones like that. So products are rad product are radicals. Um, same rules apply. Okay, I can put these underneath each other. If I multiply these together, I get a positive 150. Now my life is easy. Okay, I can break that apart into 25 times 6. So my answer just becomes 5 squared to 6. All right, just for good practice. For just for good practice, you know, it might not be a bad idea is if you pause it right now and put this one together. And then once you're done, check and see what I got. So my answer was 10 square root of 30. I just multiplied them together and got square root of 3,000. Split that into 130 and then got 10 square root of 30. So now with the imaginary numbers, here's kind of what happens. Put the numbers together, put the i's together. So negative 2 times 7 is going to be negative 14. Times i times i, which is i squared. And now here's what you have to remember. i squared is really negative 1. So this is negative 14 times negative 1. So my answer is going to be positive 14. Adding, subtracting, and multiplying, the same kind of deal. In this case, i kind of acts like a regular variable. I mean, you're not... You're not trying to get too clever, too fancy with this. This one's pretty straightforward. 6 and 1, negative 4i, plus 3i, 7 minus i. There you go. Same kind of idea here with a minus. Take the negative through. Negative 2 plus 5i, plus 1, minus 2i. Take that subtraction sign all the way through. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, plus 5i minus 2i is plus 3i. There's my answer. Multiplying. Here's kind of where things can get hairy. You've got to FOIL it. Follow the FOIL method. So when I do that, I will get 36 plus 6i minus 6i minus i squared. So we get 36 minus i squared plus 6i minus 6i cancels out. But remember, i squared is negative 1. So this is like saying 36 minus negative 1, so it's going to actually be 37. All right, this is what's called a conjugate. If you got 6 plus something, 6 plus something imaginary, 6 minus something imaginary. So here, same idea, not conjugate, so I'll get something else. 6 plus 3i plus 4i plus 2i squared, 6 plus 7i plus 2i squared, but i squared is negative 1, so this is really like negative 2. So 6 plus a negative 2 is going to be 4, so my answer will be 4 plus 7i. All right, so the base of the parallelogram is that is half its height. What is the length of the base and length of the height of the parallelogram? So the base of the parallelogram is ha half its height. So there's the height, one half height, and the area of the parallelogram is 18 inches squared. So one half h times h equals 18. What is the length of the base and length of this? So this is going to be one half h squared equals 18. So if I multiply by 2, so it's going to be h squared equals 36 
square root square root h is going to be technically it's either positive or negative six but we can't have a negative length so negatives out the door so six so my height is six my base is three that's all i got thank you for playing we will talk we'll talk